Hey guys, Brett Weiss here with Tommy Tallarico. The Where? Where is, Where is he? Oh, that's me. <laughs> As you guys probably know, a lot of you that watch the channel know that Tommy Tallarico is a legendary uh, video game music composer. He holds a, a Guinness Book of World Records for working on the most video games. Oh my gosh, I sound I sound busy. Is that why you look tired? <laughs> no, that's what, just kidding. By the way, I'm like five foot five. <laughs> Red's like eight feet tall, so I think we should do the interview like okay, this. Now work. you know how I feel. <laughs> no, I'm. So what other? Uh, now you've got some other world records too, right? Yeah, uh, person who's worked on the most video games in their lifetime, over 350. Uh, video Games Live, uh, right. my touring concert show. It's the longest running touring concert symphony show ever. Right. Uh, tonight's our 518th show. It's crazy. And we also hold the Guinness World Record for the, the biggest symphony show ever seen live. 752,000 people oh my gosh. watching an orchestra. Where was this? Uh, Be where do you think? Beijing, China. Oh, okay. oh of course. Yeah. <laughs> and we played the uh, Bird's Nest, which is the National Olympic Stadium. Right. And there was 130,000 people inside and 600,000 people outside because it was a free show. And we would set up uh, video screens and, and uh, speakers outside the event. It was awesome. Now, when you do a show like this, so like I said, we're at Will Rogers Coliseum in Fort Worth, Texas. Yeah. When you do a show like this, is there a particular uh, number or two that most people want to hear, like Billy Joel's Piano Man, or Billy Joel's Piano Man? Right, right. Is there a particular like Led Zeppelin, yeah. Stairway to Heaven. Right. Uh, yeah, for, I mean, it's a couple, actually. I mean, I mean uh, Zelda, mm -hmm. Pokemon, right. uh, Halo, and Final Fantasy. I would say those are the, uh, those are the biggest ones. If I had to put them in order, I'd probably say uh, Final Fantasy's number one, right, yeah. and then Zelda number two, uh, you know, uh, Halo, Warcraft, they're, they're all kind of up there, but, but I'd say Final Fantasy and, and Zelda are the two ones that you'll hear the biggest Right, yeah, now that's obviously huge names. Now, you did music for one of my favorite all-time places. Which one's that? Games. Maximo goes to glory. Oh, there you go. That, <laughs> yeah. that is one of my all-time favorites, and I don't hear enough love for that game. Does I know. anybody ever mention that to you, or not have you guys ever worked it into your concert? Not a lot of folks. You know, now we did work because one of the one of the segments in Video Games Live is what we call the classic arcade medley, yeah. right? And we actually just put that on our last album, Level Six, and in there. I have, we do 20 classic arcade games. We start with Pong mm -hmm. and, okay. and go through Donkey Kong and right. Dragon's the Medley and, and all, the, yeah. all the way up to Tetris, all right. the greatest arcade games. Yeah. And in there is Ghosts and Goblins. Oh, great. So, Which was the forerunner of Maximo. And what I did is, if you remember in Maximo, the menu screen was the Ghosts and Goblins theme, but I did it in a big band orchestral swing. Right. So that version is in the video game. Okay. I took the maximal arrangement Fantastic. and put it in for Ghost and Goblins because it's the same melody. Right, now you built this big empire. You're the front man for Video Games Live. You got your guitar going. Uh, you're the president of Intellivision. Right. You're coming out with the Intellivision Amico next year, a very yes. highly anticipated console. Yes. Tell me about the beginning. So when did you discover video games and why are you so passionate about the Intellivision in particular? Yeah, well, Intellivision was my first machine growing up, you know, so, um, I mean, the first machine, my first like serious machine. You were maybe how old? Uh, well, I would, it would have been 1980, so I was 12. So y'all got one when it was new. Yeah, uh, yeah, right. yeah, okay. yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, yeah, a year yeah. old. Yeah, uh, it was still new in stores. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, Christmas 1980. Mm -hmm. and, nice. and, and when I think of Intellivision, I think of me and my mom and my dad and my younger brother and my younger sister all gathered around the TV set as a family right. playing video games. Yeah. You know, and that's what we want to bring back with Intellivision, with Amico, because yeah. you know games have become so solitary now. You know, multiplayer online games mean a, a kid in a dark room with their headphones on. Right. Casual games on mobile means somebody's head buried in their in their mobile. Yeah. And and yeah, there's some games out there like on the Switch. You talk about you know Mario Kart yeah. or. Um, Geometry Wars, you can uh, play a couple players. Exactly, yeah. but I'm talking about a system where everybody, no matter what your skill level is, like my mom's not buying a Switch and playing Smash Brothers. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right. right? But my mom did buy a Wii 13 yeah. years ago, so yeah. she could go bowling, and I can play video games with 
it's my mom again. Right, I went over to my brother-in-law's house when they got a Wii, uh -huh. and their whole family's together, and both of their kids, you know, mom and dad, and they're all playing bowling. And what did I do? I rushed out to get a Wii right after that because it was so much fun. So exactly. hopefully the same thing will happen with the Amico. It, it will happen, yes. and that's exactly my point, Brad, it, right. it, is that that, doesn't, that thing doesn't exist anymore. Those mm -hmm. people who bought the Wii right. didn't go out and buy the Switch. You know, right. Switch is a different kind of machine. It's awesome, don't get me wrong, right. but it's not that. Yeah. And that's what we're doing is we want to bring that but times 10. Mm -hmm. We want every single game, because one of the problems with the Wii, if you remember, is that they had that initial Wii Sports thing, but then Nintendo really didn't ride that caravan. Yeah. You know, they went back to the hardcore gamer because that's what they do. Right. Smash Brothers, Pikmin, Pikachu, Pokemon, right, uh, yeah. Metroid Prime, a game mm -hmm. I worked on, Mario, Zelda. You know, they went right back to the wheelhouse, which again is fine. Mm -hmm. But what we're doing is we're doing Wii Bowling times 100. Right. Every single game for Amico is family friendly and couch co-op. Well, what, what kind of... I can see something else. So when I was a kid, mm -hmm. before we had our own game console, I rode my bike all over town, right. all the different neighborhoods, to play their Odyssey 2, to play their right. Atari, to play their television. Yeah. And you know, inevitably, neighbor kids would gather around, friends would play, you know, we're all in the living room, or you know, most game systems back then were in the living room and yes. not back in somebody's bedroom. Right. And so we'd all gather around and play. So this sounds like kind of bringing that kind of vibe back. Absolutely. I mean, think of this too, uh, Brett, is if it, is it the average household where do they spend all of their entertainment money? What is the most expensive thing in a typical household? It's their screen, right? Uh, right it's yeah. their 4K screen. That's where people are spending the all the time these days. Right? So, so the average household puts all their money onto their TV, mm -hmm. into that, invest into that, right. yet, again, for the casual or non-gamer, they're not hooking up Xboxes and Playstations and, and Switches, right? So, mm -hmm. so what we're doing is we're, we're giving an alternative to say, you know, board games over the last five years They've really taken off. have gone up 40% every year for the last five years. Why is that? Because they can't play video games. Right, yeah. Non-gamers can't play video yeah. games anymore. Those are the holidays. Everybody's, you know, post pictures of, you know, all family playing board games. Exactly. And all so, and yeah. that's what we're bringing back. We want people, no matter what skill level you are, if you're a hardcore gamer, mm -hmm. if you're. But see, our marketing, our go-to-market strategy is really based around parents, right? Around the those non-gamers right, to say, yeah. hey, you can get back together. Now, I think hardcore gamers are going to buy this system as well. Oh, yeah. Like you said. I, well, I went over there, I want to get, it might be your second or third machine, right. but it's a machine that you can turn on when your non-gaming friends and family come over and you can all have fun together. Yeah, right? and anybody 40 over that remembers the Intellivision or even maybe their late 30s and over is going to want this, for sure. For sure. But there's such a big untapped market like you're talking about, exactly. all these casual games, you know, Ann Phyllis over on her phone playing, you know, some jewel-based game, yeah. or, you know, Candy Crush, Candy Crush whatever or Angry Birds or whatever. Just remember, there's 200 million hardcore gamers in the world, mm -hmm. but 3 billion people that play mobile games every day, and casual games, right. and all of them are just playing by themselves. Right. It's crazy, right? right? So that's what we want to do. We want to bring people back together, together again, using technology to bring people back together. Right. Well, fantastic. So October 10th, 2020. So 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 2020. It comes out. Please check out IntellivisionAmico.com. That's the website where you'll see all the information. Please sign up to our mailing list. We're on Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. The mailing list is where you want to be because we get the information there first. So Christmas of 2020 is going to be awesome because everybody's yes. going to have their Amico under their uh, tree. And maybe even Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving <laughs> or Halloween. Well. Halloween too. Maybe the Halloween gift. Absolutely. The election. The election. <laughs> the election. Why not? That's everybody's right. going to have the country is going to be wanting to turn off their TV well, swearing see, at it. The so. election is going to make everybody like this. Well, the Miko's going to bring everybody bring back together. together. <laughs> In fact, I'll tell you, we're going to do an election game. Oh, really? Yes, well, yeah, right. so, so if it didn't work out the way you want, maybe you can play the game. Right, it'll right. Work out better. Well, that's what video games are all about, right? Getting in, you know, exactly. what doesn't work out for you in real life, it can happen for you on the screen. <laughs> totally. All right, awesome. well, thanks a lot, Tommy. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. So tell us, when is the next Video Games Live performance? 
Uh, we're, if you go to videogameslive.com, it'll give you all the info. On the whole schedule. The next one is in San Francisco in a couple of weeks. Right. Then we go over to uh, uh, Europe. We're playing Bulgaria and Spain. Right. Multiple shows there. Uh, so yeah, we're just, we're all over. Then we're going to Doha and Qatar in the Middle East. Wow. So what's crazy, it's crazy to think that video game music is loved by everyone around the world. And again, what I'm doing with Video Games Live, you'll see out in the audience here tonight, right. families, grandparents, kids, non-gamers, bringing them together to enjoy. You don't have to be a hardcore gamer to enjoy the show or to understand what's going on. Right. So I'm, to be I'm, colorful and the symphonies back in your head. Exactly. You're a choir, right? A hundred people on stage tonight. Wow, that is awesome. A hundred people on stage tonight. So taking everything I've learned over the last 17 years about bringing people together for a live show, we're going to now bring that into the living room as well. Fantastic. Really looking forward to it. Thanks, Tommy. Really appreciate it. Really awesome. appreciate it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching the channel. Check out Tommy Tallarico on you know, Twitter, Facebook, etc. Check out, check out uh, Video Games Live. And guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Tommy says, click that subscribe button. He does. <laughs> click the subscribe button. This guy knows his crap. I mean, I got all his books. Even before I met him, I'm like, dude, I, got, I, I took a picture. I all your books. I got them. I really I'm appreciate a fan. That. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Awesome. We will talk to you guys. Signing off. Peace out.